This video is sponsored by Hobby Not Models. Check the link in the description below for more details. Hey, I'm John. Welcome to Mr. G's Workbench. And today we're gonna to dive into a new build. It's Tamiya's F14D and 148 scale. I know this has been done before on other channels, but I've wanted to do one. Uh, I kind of hit a, a modeling rut after three months of moving and everything and, and slogging through the rest of the Corsair build. And no reflection on Magic Factory for that. That's just a function of moving and just kind of looking at the same shit like sitting on your desk for months and months. So that being said, we're going to jump in on this. I'd like to thank Mark over at Hobby Nut Models. Uh, he provided a lot of the material for today and uh, you can check out his uh, website hobbynutmodels.com. There's a link uh, down in the description below the video. Uh, let's Mark know that you uh, found his website through my channel which helps me and uh, it would be very much appreciated. Um, thank you uh, for tuning in. Over 4,640 of you at this point. Always happy to, to have every one of you come back. Uh, if you're not subscribed, like it looks like 70% of the people watching these videos aren't, hit the subscribe button. It's down below. It doesn't cost you a penny and uh, you'll be notified every time I put out a new video. Thank you to my channel members whose names are scrolling up the screen. Very much appreciate that next level of support. And if you're interested in, in joining them, uh, there's a join button down below. Hit the join button, give you all the information about uh, becoming a channel member. Let's jump in. We're going to take a quick look at the aftermarket we've got to complement the kit. Again, provided generously by Hobby Nut Models. And after that, we'll get in on the build and we'll see how far we get in today's episode. All right. So uh, let's take a look. All right. Let's take a quick look at the aftermarket we've got for this uh, project. We'll start out with uh, what's kind of almost become like a standard to use. It's the Quinta Studios uh, 3D instrument panels, and it also has the seat belts for the uh, kit provided seats. So we're gonna go with that. Uh, always a pleasure to use 3D printed stuff in the cockpit. It just takes you to the next level with uh, a minimal amount of effort. Next we've got uh, Wheelie and Wheels. These are from Aries. Uh, some people uh, in modeling circles have pointed out that it's really supposed to be air res. So we've got wheels, uh, resin wheels from Wheeliant, a subdivision of Aries. All right. In this house, Aries is Aries, not air res. I'm not changing the way I say shit. All right. Uh, they look good. I'm looking forward to trying them out. Next, we've got uh, we've got a pedo tube and an angle of attack probe in metal from Galaxy Tools. Uh, I like to use them whenever I can get my hands on them at a reasonable price, which this was. Next, we've got uh, resin GBU-16s from Edward. Uh, I don't tend to use resin weapons a lot, but I'm gonna give this one a try. Uh, those will be sitting on the belly of the F-14. We've also got uh, resin exhausts from Edward. Um, I think I've maybe used resin exhausts twice, and they were both in Kitty Hawk kits as they were provided. And it was just the exhaust part itself. Here you're replacing uh, Tamiya's exhaust assembly with, with resin and photo etch. So I'm looking forward to trying this. Hopefully I can uh, make this look good. The next thing I've got is uh, die cut uh, masks. These are from uh, Galaxy Model. They're, they're cut for the AMK kit, which I had. The AMK F14D was a shit show, and I couldn't send it to the uh, landfill fast enough. Uh, I just was not happy with the way it went together, and I had a lot of, a lot of build-related issues with it. I just I'd rather not talk about that. But here you see they, they give you pre-cut uh, masks to do the walkways above the intakes as well as exhaust uh, masking for those vents there. 
and some other stuff. I'm also hoping to use the uh, canopy ones on the inside of the canopy so that I for once can paint uh, my canopies on the inside. I, I always cheat and just paint the part closest to the outside of like the canopy or the windscreen. Now we've got uh, the markings. I'm going to show you this really quick. Uh, bear with me. I really wanted to do a Grim Reaper's jet, the F-101. I like the look of this, but uh, these Tamiya decals are so thick. Uh, it's, I, I really, they, you can see them sitting off the paper and they, they're not translucent in the clear areas. They, they look cloudy and I just don't want to take a chance, go through all the trouble of painting the tail black with the red trim then go and lay this decal on and find that the uh, clear portions are not translucent. So I'm not going to take a chance with that. I've got the decals from the AMK kit left. And uh, I, my, my first inclination was, again, to do the Grim Reapers jet. Uh, but it's an all gray jet. Uh, I just, I get bored quickly on monotone stuff like this. Like, I know it's two shades of gray, but it's fucking gray. So we're going with the Tomcatters, as you should have figured out from the thumbnail. Uh, I'm going to do this because it's, it's a gray jet, yeah, but it's got black on it. I know it's the CAG jet. It's 100. That's the CAG jet. Uh, I know there's only one like that, but it breaks it up makes it a little more entertaining to build. So I'm going with that. And uh, these decals looked way better than the Tammy ones, so I'm hoping for better. And uh, with a couple of exceptions, all of this stuff is available over at uh, Hobby Nut Models. If, uh, if you're so inclined, Mark has the, the F-14 kit, and he can get you any of these accessories uh, Email him, ask him, tell him what you want. He'll, he'll be more than happy to accommodate you. So that being said, let's jump in on this build. I've spared you the time of watching me glue in the, uh, the kit instrument panels. Well, the side consoles. I've, uh, I've used my handy dandy sanding sticks. And uh, I've taken all the detail off in preparation for the Quinta uh, instrument panels we're going to install. Uh, I've taken this as far as I'm going to take it until I paint it. Painting it uh, dark gold gray, uh, FS36231. That should be the right color. I've also got the, uh, these uh, side panels cleaned up. Uh, it's just these two that have, uh, they're going to be circuit breakers. Got that done. We've got the rear instrument panel. Oh no, I'm lying. That's the front instrument panel is cleaned up. This is the rear. This one's cleaned up as well. All the details been taken off. We've got the joysticks. This is gonna get installed into the uh, right fuselage half. This is the refueling probe. I'm gonna leave the door off, uh, whether it's uh, period accurate or not for whatever paint uh, scheme I go with. I'm gonna have the door removed from the refueling probe, which was common. Uh, during uh, overseas deployments during uh, combat uh, because the door would get knocked off by uh, in-flight refueling so it was just not there so I've trimmed the front piece of the refueling probe off and I've installed it into the uh, open bay and then the other thing I have is I've got the parts for the nose gear bay ready to get painted I'm gonna paint these detail them up weather them and then I'll assemble it
cockpit is done, the quinta panels are in, and uh, just a couple observations I'll make really quick. Uh, for some reason, back here you can you can't you're not gonna see it now because it's buried so deep in here. But I had the paint on the quinta part. I don't know. It interacted with the glue or something, and it kind of got swirly looking. I don't know what I did wrong there. The other thing is the usual paint matching. Uh, the Quinta uh, decals to the actual cockpit color you use. Obviously theirs is lighter than uh, than what I wound up painting it. Painted it, you know, dark gold gray is what it's supposed to be and that's what I did. 36231 and their gray is lighter. So it is what it is. Uh, I, I'm not one of those people that goes crazy trying to match it up. They look good, like always, you know, they've got the three-dimensional appearance. I can't complain about that. I didn't make a lot of changes to the cockpit. I added a little lead wire hose here that might be visible later that wraps around to the back. That was the only thing outside of what Quinta gives you that I added. You use the Tamiya cockpit the way it is. Most of this, most of the flat panels I glued in with uh, Gator Grip, which is a PVA. Uh, the instrument panels, because they were on weird angles and bent in places, I used a slow setting CA for that uh, gel. And I think I had good results with it. So, hope you like it. Let's move on. So I think we made some good progress. It didn't take long. Uh, I don't like to jump on stereotypes, but what makes this Tamiya kit such a pleasure to build is the, the degree of engineering, the planning, uh, the way the parts are laid out. They, they just fit one on top of the next. They, they literally build you know, across the, the steps provided. So we've got this. So we've gotten through step seven and uh, couldn't be happier with it. If you've built this model, chime in in the comments below. Let me know what you think. If you don't like the fact that I'm building it marked the way it was in 1997, but bombing it up the way it was in the 2000s, I'm sorry. Let me know in the comments below, okay? So uh, that's where we're at. Uh, next time we get together, I think we'll finish the rest of the build, if nothing else, and then we'll get to paint, all right? Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for stopping by. Take care, stay well, and I'll see you guys next time.